How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Wolves. We're back for another match preview, the second Premier League game of the season, and Wolves are finally back, full capacity at Molyneux Stadium this weekend. I'm really, really looking forward to get back, the, uh, getting back to the ground. First game at Molyneux uh, under Mr. Bruno Large, and we're up against our former manager and head coach in Nuno Espirito Santo. So really, really looking forward to it. Uh, guys, as always, be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel. Going to be giving my thoughts on the game, my predicted lineup, and uh, of course, the opposition preview later on in the video as well. But let's kick off once again with the match facts. Uh, we dropped a few of these. I'm going to do three every week, I think. Um, and let's start, off with, let's start off with a negative one, unfortunately. Wolves have won one of their seven Premier League matches at Molyneux against Spurs. Drawing two, losing four, and it was a 1-0 victory in February 2010, thanks to a winning goal from David Jones. Uh, in all competitions, though, this will be the 100th meeting between Wolves and Spurs. In their last meeting in May, Spurs won 2-0, of course, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And they are looking for consecutive Premier League wins over Wolves for the first time since winning both meetings in the 03-04 season. And an even more negative one to finish off. Since Wolves returned to the Premier League in the 2018-19 season, they haven't won their first home league match of the season in any of their free campaigns. But of course, they're all under Nuno. We're with Bruno now. And we're looking back at that 1-0 defeat to, to Leicester City, where, of course, getting enough out of the game is frustrating. But overall, the performance was encouraging. The second half performance, as always, seems to be much better. And that's what we saw again last week. And there's definitely positive signs to go into this game against Tottenham with. Of course, we're going to talk about Spurs a little bit more towards the end of the video. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see how they react um, after losing to Portuguese side uh, Passos de Ferreira yesterday in the Europa Conference League, uh, despite having a fantastic 1-0 win against Manchester City on the opening game of the season. It's been very quiet on the transfer front for Wolves as well. We're hoping, maybe this time last week, that we could at least see one or two new players back in the squad. One of them, a new face I thought we were going to see was Rafa Mir, who returned to uh, Wolverhampton earlier this week. He's already left. He's joined Sevilla and that was confirmed today. Owen Otisawi will not be in the squad as well. He's joined Club Bruges. So we're probably looking at bringing um, a number of under-23s players once again onto the bench. Last week, it was Chem Campbell, uh, Christian Marquez and Luke Kundal. I wouldn't be surprised to see the same again. Um... But yeah, I'm hoping that Wolves can, I don't know, you know, we seem to attack quite well in that game against Spurs and I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do it again. Bruno said today in his press conference that in training at the moment, he's only got 15 senior players. Uh, of course, a lot of under 23s in there, of course, a lot of injuries as well. But if that isn't a cry out for transfers and signings, I don't know what is. And hopefully it's going to be a busy time for Wolves in the next 10, uh, 11 days or so. And of course, a busy time for us here on Talking Wolves as well, reporting on them and talking about them as well. So fingers crossed we can see some more signings coming through. And of course, there's always news released quite late on a Friday evening after the press conferences. So be sure to follow us on all the social medias to see if there's any major news that drops late this evening. Uh, let's look at my predicted lineup anyway, guys, for this game. Um, and big up to everyone that liked the little swanky new graphic we've got on here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, very, very similar to the starting lineup that we saw uh, last week. A little change from my predicted lineup from last week as well. So we'll see Jose Sar start in goal. Made one or two decent stops against Leicester uh, last week, but I don't think he could have done much to stop the Jamie Vardy strike. Um, my back five have gone with Marcel once again. He seems to be uh, the favoured uh, left wing back over Ryan Aynori at the moment. But I'm sure we'll see Aynori against Nottingham Forest on Tuesday. Uh, the back three, once again, Max Kilman, Romain Saiz and Connor Cody. Of course, we are screaming out for a new centre-back. There's been a few links over the last week or so. But hopefully we see some more players coming through. Max Kilman having a fantastic game 
uh, last week against Leicester. A lot of people giving him the nod potentially for man of the match. And right wing back, I have put Nelson Semedo back in there, returning from his self-isolation uh, last week and uh, played for the under-23s on Monday to keep that match fitness and sharpness up. And that does indicate that possibly he's going to start on Saturday, uh, on Sunday, sorry, but Keanu Hoover... Um, you know, put in a great performance against Leicester, to be fair, and has every right to be starting once again. I have put a middle two of Matinho and Neves. It probably wouldn't be my preferred middle two. I think every time Dendonka comes on, we just seem to be a stronger unit alongside Ruben Neves. And again, a central midfield partnership could be changed over the next couple of weeks. I think that's another position that Wolves, in my opinion, still need to strengthen. So I have gone with Matinho and Neves to possibly just try and keep control of the game a little bit more. And then a front three of Francisco Trincao, Adama Traore, who was <laughs> involved in a lot last weekend and got a little bit of stick uh, for those chances he missed, but hopefully he can bag one over the weekend. And of course, Mr. Raul Jimenez returning to Molyneux uh, in front of a crowd for the first time in a long time. He's bagged in three of his four games against Tottenham Hotspur. So really hoping that we could see Jimenez grab another goal in front of the South Bank, in front of the North Bank, anywhere. Just hopefully we'll see him get on the score sheet once again. Um, so guys, we head over now to the opposition preview. I spoke uh, to Ricky from last word on Spurs, about Spurs, about Nuno and about Wolves versus Tottenham at Molyneux on Sunday. So I'm delighted to be alongside Ricky, the uh, creator and host from the Last Word on Spurs podcast. How are you keeping, mate? Not bad, my friend. Not bad at all. Yourself? Yeah, all good. Thank you for joining me today. It's uh, going to be a cracky game at Molyneux on uh, Sunday. And, I mean, you couldn't write it really. Nuno returning to Wolves, his first away game, our first game back at Molyneux. And it's yeah. it's against somebody who's been at the club for a number of years. Um, but it's been a crazy summer for you guys in terms of management, hierarchy, players, where do we start? I mean, let's let's start with with Nuno. Obviously, it's a, a guy that we've had some fantastic memories with. Probably not your uh, probably not your first choice as as manager. What's what 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 was your opinion when he was appointed? Do you know what's funny, my friend? Uh, do you know, with regards to Nuno, for me, he was always a manager I actually admired from afar. I thought yeah. the first two seasons he did with Wolves was some great stuff. I, I mean, I thought you played some great football. I thought you were really well organised, quite disciplined. I think at one point you had the best defensive record in the league, I think just bar City and Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So from afar, I was kind of keeping an eye on him thinking, oh, do you know what? You know, this is when Potts was in charge. I thought as a manager there, that, you know, does seem to have got a real good connection with the fans. I didn't obviously think, you know, where we went from Conte <laughs> In the summer, yeah, 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 yeah. the negotiations. I think the problem Spurs had is that when you go for that level of manager, and um, anybody else feels really underwhelming after that. To be honest <laughs> with you, and then obviously Spurs had the situation where we just literally went. I mean, we just literally went to shop. We ended up going mm. at one point for Catuso, and you're just wondering where is the club's identity here? What are they doing? And um, finally, obviously they set off a new no. And I've got to be honest with you, you know, I was never one to not want to give him a chance. I think my only reservation was that. In that last season at Wolves, I mean, you know it better than me. Obviously, he lost a number of key players that obviously contributed to maybe the reasons why Wolves finished where they were. I think, and again, you can tell me, I think the relationship between him and the Wolves fans, maybe it felt like there was a need for that break. Maybe there was a need mm -hmm. to kind of have a part in a ways. And he needed a fresh challenge. And I think Spurs is going to give him that challenge. I think he's walking into a very, very tough job at Tottenham. There's a number of players that have got issues surrounding their contracts and futures. The likes of Harry Kane, the likes of Tungy and Dombele. He's not coming to an easy dressing room. But I've got to say, so far, I've been pleasantly surprised by um, how he's ad adapted. Um, listen, I'm not going to count last night in terms of the Europa Conference League because, yeah. listen, it's a, it's, a, it's a mishmash of players there that aren't in his first 11 and, you know, they're not in his in his real first thoughts in terms of the team. But um, I can only go by the result against last week, City, where we played ever so well. I thought there was a real disciplined, um, a real courageous approach from Tottenham, a real desire for every player to fight for the shirt. So, I mean, so far, I've got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm quite impressed with Nuno. I know it's very, very early days. I'm sure, you know, we're going to have some rocky times in the road like any time there is a manager appointed. Yeah. But, yeah, so far, so good. And I, at least I wish him all the best. I think you'll probably agree with me. He's a very honourable man. Comes across ever so well. He does have that way of galvanising a fan base. Got a wonderful applause last week at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Good. And I think he's a manager that fans can really get behind. It's going to be intriguing on Sunday at Molyneux because, uh, you know, we had some great times with him. Uh, but like you said, towards the end, 
there was a massive split in our fan base. I think a lot of them sort of knew we, he needed to move on. A lot of fans though still wanted him to stay. So I'm going to be, I am intrigued to see what the the reception is going to be like. But like you say, he has he, he has got a bit of a job on his hands. In particular, I mean, you look at your transfer window. I've seen players be linked, be close to Spurs not coming to Spurs but the big one obviously which is you know everywhere at the moment is Harry Kane what's your what's your stance on that and where is it at the moment do you, do you think he's going to be a Tottenham player at the end of this window uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest I think it's just 50 50 at the moment I mean clearly Harry wants to go and listen it's all about whether City do meet Spurs' asking price I think the issue Spurs have got now is coming towards the end of the window and what we now are 12 days away yeah. Listen, the longer that goes and we don't have a replacement for Kane, you just can't imagine Spurs are in a position to accept the bid. I've got to be <laughs> honest, I think you know we've only got one recognised striker at the club. Huminson's not a striker, he's a forward. We haven't got Carlos Vinicius, he went back to Benfica. So I think Spurs are in that position now where if they were to let Kane, Kane go, they're all looking for one striker. They argue they would need two. Yeah. I think it's a situation for Tottenham where I think it's going to be very, very hard to even think about letting Kane go in this situation they find themselves in. Uh, your top player, you know, last season smashed all the records. Your golden boot winner, playmaker winner as well. So he's a top, top player. And I think for Tottenham at the moment, it's very, very hard to see a situation where Spurs are going to allow Kane to go without at least not one, two strikers lined up. And that's tricky now with 12 days left, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, you know other clubs are going to know that Spurs have got a load of money to spend as well, and that's, I suppose, the difficulty with, with that at the moment. So I think that's going to be intriguing going into the last couple of weeks of, of the window. But you mentioned it earlier, the defeat yesterday. Obviously, you know, you look at that squad, It's it, most of those players aren't your, your regular yeah. players or the players that we're, we're likely to see on Sunday. Do you think that result last night is going to affect that first-team squad going into Sunday? Wouldn't have thought so. I mean, like I say, he made 11 changes. So it's pretty much every player that played against City wasn't involved. And I would imagine that we're going to probably go with the same 11, possibly Kane being included potentially against Wolves on Sunday. You know, I think the only thing that Nuno did comment on last night was that maybe the feel-good factor a little bit has been affected. But I yeah. mean, all I would say to that is that, you know, it is a completely different 11. And that 11, that's not in his plans. So therefore, for me, I'm not going to be taking too much into account last night. I mean, suppose I've got a second leg to turn it around. You'd like to think home advantage and probably putting out one or two more senior pros will be enough to get them over the line. But I don't think there'll be a hangover against Wolves. I think my only, I wouldn't say concern, but my only feeling on this is how we're going to approach the game. I'll be very interested to know um, if Spurs are going to apply a front foot attitude to Wolves. If we are going to go there, uh, put 11 men behind the ball, try and soak up pressure, then counter-attack. I mean, no disrespect to you, mate. I think for Spurs in the position they want to be, if they want to be competing for the top four, they've got to be going to games like, you know, Wolves at Molyneux, going there to win it. I think Spurs Bullshit. have to have that attitude. And, you know, as Wolves have come on recently in the last couple of seasons, although you had that disappointing result last week, I think you've got a decent manager in charge there who's obviously ambitious in his own right. But I would like to think Spurs are going to approach the game with a view to win it and not to sit back. So it will be interesting to see, yeah, just how Spurs do line up ahead of this one. Yeah, I mean, formation-wise, he tried, well, you know, he's quite famous almost for his sort of five at the back, three at the back formations over the last few years. Last season, he did try and push a four at the back, like a 4-2-3-1. Uh, has it been a mix of both so far? I know last night he played a little bit with five at the back. What was it? Yeah. How did he start against City? Yeah, uh, we started City with, it was a back five and reverted into, into, oh, right, a, okay. into a three. So, I mean, listen, I think with Nuno... The good thing about him is he does seem that he's quite uh, flexible in terms of tactics. I think, you know, previously with Spurs, that's always been a bit of an issue where he never quite had a plan B. Again, it's so hard. I'm judging it off one game. This is the hard thing. Of course, yeah, it's difficult. Off the yeah. back of 94 minutes against one of the best teams in the world for City. Um, but I was so impressed by that performance. Um, I think the gauge will be for Tottenham now is they had something really kind of to, to work as a cause last week. They had the Harry Kane situation. And they also have plan against the champions. This is slightly different for Tottenham because the hurricane speculation is slightly mellowed and we're not mm -hmm. playing the champions. We're playing a Wolves side that, you know, Wolves are at home, are always a difficult team. I never go up to Molyneux feeling confident. I've got to be honest with you. I always feel <laughs> a tough venue to go to. The fans get behind the team. Um, it's also going to be that new manager bounce as well. I'm not going to take much into account last week. It's a difficult fixture, Leicester away. And um, there'll be fans that want to get behind the manager, show their support to him. Yeah, it's obviously fairly new in there. So um, my worry is that we're going to be walking into a cauldron come Sunday. And I think there's <laughs> going to be a lot of all fans behind the manager. And yeah. it's how those Spurs fans cope with that and how and the players do as well. That'll be interesting how they do cope with that. And Ricky, if you had, you know, if you were Nuno now, what would your ideal lineup be for, for the game on Sunday against Wolves? 
it's difficult. Do you know why it's so tricky for me to answer that question? Because obviously I'm not privy to what's going on at the training ground at the moment. Yeah. There'll be players in there that I would want that probably aren't in the right frame of mind to play. The likes of Ndombele, the likes of Harry Kane. Um, I think what Nuno has shown so far, that for him, he just wants players that are committed. Um, and as a fan, I think that's all you can ask for. You want players that are going to go out there, fight for the shirt, represent the badge, give you everything. And um, I think with Nuno so far, he's shown that you know the players that don't want to do that, they're not going to be yeah. in the team. And for that, yeah. you have to back him. So um, if that means that we're going to start the same eleven that we showed last week against City, I'd go for it. I think I'd only be, if it was me personally, I'd probably only make the one change. I'd probably try and, uh, I'd say try it. I would probably, like I say, for me personally, take Bergwijn out and put Harry Kane up there and have a proper number nine leading the line. But again, it's with Harry Kane, if he's in the right frame of mind. For me, he's the best striker in the world. He's top them through and through. And he's been at the club since he's 11 years old. I think there's a time where, look, he's still got a three-year contract with the club. You have to respect that. You have to honour that. And he has to get his head down and work. And if the if the move comes for him, I've always said with Kane, if the move comes, I don't begrudge him with that move. I think the only thing I begrudge is the way he's gone about it, which has been so disappointing. Bearing in mind the caliber of the man, really. Yeah, and I'm going to even I'm going to ask you an even more difficult question: score prediction if you've got one for Sunday. <laughs> oh dear, I hate oh. doing these as well. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? It's um, it's tricky. I mean, I'd love to sit here and say Spurs will comfortably win. Oh. God, I, can't, I can't come to all show and not back my team. So I'm yeah. going to go for a, a 2-1 Spurs win. I think we'll slightly edge it. It'll be a difficult game. Wolves will prove to be a difficult stern test. But I back Nuno to make it back to back wins in the Premier League. And yeah, carry on what's been a real good feel fact to start for Tottenham in the league. That's my go-to 2-1. It's a, I think it's a safe one. Both teams to score, but back your own team as well. It's always a safe one. Um, Ricky, thank you so much for coming on Talking Walls. I'll leave the links uh, for last word on, on Spurs in the uh, description of the uh, video. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube for those guys. Uh, but yeah, may the best team win on Sunday, Ricky. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, mate. All the best. Cheers. All the best in the season apart from this game. <laughs> Well, big thanks once again to the guys at Last Word on Spurs. I'll be sure to leave uh, their links in the description down below. Fantastic podcasts that they do. If you are a Spurs fan, you don't already listen to get involved. Um, and that's all, guys. Score prediction from me. I know Rick said a 2-1 to Spurs. I'm going to go with the old faithful. 2-1 Wolverhampton Wanderers. I predicted a 1-1 last weekend. I wasn't far away, but I'll predict a 2-1 Wars. I, I believe that Bruno Large can get us off to a winning start at Molyneux and uh, fingers crossed we grab the three points because that would be huge for us. As always guys, let me know your thoughts and score prediction in the comment section down below. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new and until next time, I'll catch you all very, very soon.